Dr. Morley. Yeah? Come and have a look at this. That's over 100 miles up, coming in from space. Now, what's the speed? Over 10,000 miles an hour. Just wait a minute, it's slowing down rapidly. It's undoubtedly a meteorite. It'd have to be a big one, then, to pick up on radar at that height. It'll disintegrate as soon as it hits the Earth's atmosphere. I hope so. At the moment, it's headed straight for London. It's changing course. Not only that, it's well inside the Earth's atmosphere now, and it hasn't burnt up. But that's impossible. It means it's been guided down. Height, ten miles. It must be visible to the naked eye. The night color is a mystifying name. I'm sorry, sir, this road's closed. We have permission to look over this area. Well, you're right to speak to the Major, sir. Could you come with me, please? Yet, Major? Located what? And the object that came in from space. It fell within a five mile radius of this spot. Don't tell us that all those troops we passed on the way here are, are on maneuvers, Major. We tracked it all the way down on our radar. Now, I'm afraid, gentlemen, I can do well, that. Well, look, if you examine our security papers, Major, you'll find that we're cleared by Army security to top secret double A. Yes, we suggest you have some scientific help with you when you find it. It could be dangerous. If we find it. Oh, what do you mean, if? According to our instruments, it should be about 20 feet high. It should be a simple matter to locate the crater. There is no 20-foot object and no crater. What? Are you sure? We've had two helicopters out since first light. Nothing. That's extraordinary. Well, there must be. We couldn't have made that much of an error in our estimation, could we? You didn't. We've had three separate checks through our security radar, cross-reference positions. Put it down here. Two line Americans up in Yorkshire confirmed our figures. There is no doubt that a large object landed here and disappeared. Sir, all units in position for Operation Tooth Comb. I told him to start. Dr. Doe, I want every inch of that ground examined. Yes, sir. I've had the whole heat ringed. We're coming in towards the center. We're using Geiger counters, of course. There should be a lot of radiation coming from it. One to a platoon. Platoon Red Emma reports a considerable radiation signal, sir. Map reference. Q-457. Tell them not to go any closer until I get there. Right, come with me, gentlemen. Yes,
Thanks, Sergeant. Looks like it's him. Oh, Sergeant, I'm going to have to get some more instruments. Well, that's what came down last night. There must be something wrong with our instrument. All right, gentlemen. It's quite safe to go in. Good. It's cold. It's freezing cold. Well, it must have a remarkable latent heat capacity. Capacity quite beyond my experience. <clears throat> I hate to interfere with more mundane matters, gentlemen, but what is it? Oh, can't tell till we get it back to the laboratory. You think that's what came down last night? Oh, yes, no doubt about it. This must have been a white-hot mass of flames a few hours ago. Now its temperature is well below freezing. The headquarters are bound to ask if it's of foreign origin. At the moment, Major, your guess is as good as mine. Do you notice the most amazing fact of all? We tracked that sphere through the atmosphere at a speed in excess of 10,000 miles an hour. Yet it landed without even denting the ground. That means it must have been guided down. Guided down with fantastic accuracy. Inhuman accuracy. Stop. And a guard set all around this building and four men up on the roof. Oh. Get the rest of this area cleared of all non-essential person. Very good, sir. It's a knock in. Put that container in right away. So. Higgins! Jones! Yes, sir. Pick that up. Come on, Higgins. What do you need, Sergeant? That's a bomb? That's not the reason why, Jones. And if that is an atom bomb, Higgins, and you drop it, I'll have you on a charge. If you find us, Sarge. Now, this is Miss Barlow, our analysis expert. She'll assist Dr. Costin in the investigation. How do you do? You will understand, of course, that the strictest security shield must be thrown over this matter. Mm. My orders are that the whole establishment is to be cleared. Oh, you mean the laboratory, surely? The establishment. If this is an atomic device. Your picture. Um, All right, put it down there, will you? Careful. You don't want any surprises. Right, Sergeant. Twenty five degrees below zero. What do you think it's made of, sir? Oh, a silicate or selenide of some kind. Dr. Morley, before you get too involved, I wonder if you'd be kind enough to show me around the establishment so I can set my guard. Oh, must I? Thank I was you, hoping... please. All right. What's he expecting? Paratroops from Mars? Whitehall obviously thinks it's a satellite one of our friends has set up. And we stand to leapfrog their knowledge if we discover its secrets? It's possible that sphere can take our knowledge forward 50 or 100 years, Anne. I don't think any human mind thought it up. And I don't believe any human hand built it. Don't put this down. I'm just thinking aloud. Origins obscure, and as far as hold it. Any news yet? We're just finishing our preliminary examination. And? And? We've carried out routine X-ray spectrometer and radiation tests. We find the sphere is made of an undetermined silicon type material. This forms an exterior protective shell of three millimeters thick. What's inside the sphere? A lattice of carbon filaments. Mm, but the bulk of the interior contains nothing but a vacuum. What about radiation? It's not radioactive. It's not what the Geiger counter said. The sphere itself emits no radiation at all. What was registered this morning on the Geiger counters was superficial. Mm, probably picked up by the sphere when it passed through the Van Allen strata on entering the Earth's atmosphere. 
Uh, can I take it from all this that this is not an atomic device? You can rule out all thought of that, Major. It contains no fissionable material. Well, that's a relief, anyway. But what about the country of origin? Whitehall's been on my tail all day. Well? Well, we're not in a position to venture an opinion on that. Well, sure, you must have some idea. I think there's one thing we can say for certain, Major. Yes? We have no idea at the moment. I see. Well, I'm scanning report to Whitehall. Perhaps you'll be kind enough to come with me while I phone Dr. Morley. He might want to talk to you. Yes, certainly. We're just finishing for the night, as it happens. Costin and I haven't slept for 36 hours. I'll uh, follow you on, if I may. Fine. Miss Barlow, Dr. Costin. My word, that was close, I thought, for the moment. Yes, sir. The less the military knows at this stage, the better. Mm. Well, you see that it's locked away in the storeroom, Jack. Uh-huh. We'll see you both tomorrow, then. You know, when we do break it to them, we shall have to do it gently, so they can assimilate it. Yes, it's possible we may have to do a little assimilating ourselves. Yes. Its potentialities are quite alarming. We mustn't let our imagination run riot. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, Anne. Tired? Mm, I could use my bed. So could I. Steady. No harm in trying. Can I take you home? No. No, I have my notes to type up. Well, can I help you? No, thank you. Well, then I'll uh, just say good night. Good night. Jack! Did you change your mind? No. What does he really think? Morley? Mm. Well, we're all gazing in the same crystal ball together. The whole concept of this thing is so fantastic, you know? Possibilities of origin, one hinging on another. We don't know. I'm really quite grown up, you know, Jack. Honest. I don't know, and I don't think Morley does either. You mean he really is letting his imagination run right? That's a very unscientific precept, Dan. Why don't we leave it to Morley? He'll come up with something. Oh, well, he's the boss. What if I were to turn the lights down? A good idea. My eyes are tired. I quit. Good night. Good night. Come in. Will you be wanting anything more, Miss Barlow? Oh, no, thank you. Good night, Jean. routine X-ray, spectrometer, and radiation tests, and find that the sphere is made of an undetermined silicon material. Uh, this forms a... Um, uh, it's a bad line, sir. I'm afraid I can't hear you. A big one? Oh, that was right, wasn't it? Yeah, word perfect. Because it doesn't understand a bloody word I'm saying. It's all right, sir. I'll repeat it. Uh, according to the information that I've been given, this suspect... Uh, what do you call it? A spectrometer. Uh, spectrometer, sir. Huh? No, it's a spectrometer. S P E C T. Yes, I'm sure you can, sir. 
Does what, sir? <laughs> oh, no, 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 sir, that's the salt. It's silicon. It, 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 it's an undetermined silicon... Yes, well, I was about to explain that, sir. You see, it, it forms a, a sort of protective shell which has a, a vacuum. A big pardon? I don't think I'm getting through to him. Well, no, shall I? Oh, I'd be delighted if I could get a word in edgewise. Mm. Yes, I'm still here, sir. Uh, no, sir, it's negligible. Yes, I think I do know what I'm talking about, sir. I, I was trying to tell you. He's still concerned about the radiation. Well, tell him there isn't any. Yes, I know that the Geiger count has registered a certain amount, sir, but that was explained. Yes, I... Yeah, I'd give up. Look, it was probably picked up by the sphere on entering the Val Allen strata when it passed through the... Uh, oh, you're getting me muddled now. So look, picked up when the sphere passed through the Van Allen strata on entering the Earth's atmosphere. No, I haven't developed a cold. I'm Dr. Morley. Morley, M... What? Well, no, you can hardly blame the Major, sir. Now, I don't think electronics forms part of the curriculum at Sandhurst, does it?
stolen. There's someone in there. What is it? What's going on? Who sounded the alarm? Must have been the young lady outside, I imagine, sir. Everything all right in here? Yes, sir. Yes, I sounded the alarm. Why? Well, there was, was something in here. Well, there was. I swear there was. You mean you actually saw something? Well, I saw this horrible claw and it held onto my arm. You there, Corporal Cooper. Yes, sir. You seen anyone come in or out of this window? No, sir. Have the ground search done, Hawkins? Sure. I know there was something in here. Both these windows are fastened on the inside. I don't care. Were you in the laboratory all the time, Miss Bonner? Yes. Yes, I was. So nobody could have got in or out of this storeroom through the laboratory. I can't understand it. I heard it distinctly. It? It didn't sound human. It, there was this strange breathing and then this hand. Claw, you see. Hand, claw, I don't know. It wasn't human. I did see it. I think we'd better get you home, Miss Barlow. You need some rest. You think I'm imagining the whole thing, don't you? Just going on the facts as I see them, Miss Barlow. If anything or anyone had been in this storeroom, then they'd still be in here, now, wouldn't they? Wait, I've forgotten all the excitement. Just before I heard these noises, I felt strange. Y yes, I almost fainted with a terrible pain in the head. That's probably your answer. A migraine. Do you suffer from it? No, I... And this light. The light, this blinding light. The light? Yes, coming from in here. We'll get you out. Are these Anne's notes? Yes. I don't understand. What happened? Well, there was some trouble here after you left last night, Jack. What was it? Miss Barlow sounded the alarm bell. She thought she heard somebody or something in the storeroom. Turned out to be a false alarm. And so unlike Anne, she's not the nervy type, is she? No, far from it. Well, anyway, there's no harm done. Work my men up with nothing else. Ah, I'll leave it to Good, let's get to work. Bring the sphere in here, will yes. That's exactly how I found it. That's a pretty grim looking thing. Oh, I think I was so close to it. I don't think you were in any danger, Miss Barlow. Why do you say that? Well, it stands to reason, doesn't it? I mean, this print couldn't have been made by an animal, could it? <laughs> Not any animal I know. And it must have been made by a man. A man? I think that you were the victim of a practical joke, Miss Barlow. It's the only other explanation. Practical joke? Look, I was By there. my men. 
You think some of them staged this little charade? <laughs> Barakrum gossip, you see, is that this thing came from out of space. I believe they're even betting on it with Mars and odds on favorite. <laughs> it's ridiculous, I know, but you always get rumors flying about among the men. I'm sorry about the shock that it must have caused you. Thank you. Well, I suppose it's a fairly rational explanation. It's the only possible explanation. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and parade the men. Give them some PT, work off some of their excess energy. Reminds me of the story of the two sergeants who... <clears throat> Rational explanation, rubbish. Do you really think it was a practical joke? Well, it is a possibility. No, of course not. Why not? Because the Major himself said that no one could have got in or out of that locked room. So? So who stopped Dan from opening the door last night? Who held the door from the other side? Whose footsteps did she hear? What about this claw she tells us about? And how did the thing get out of that room by the time the soldiers arrived? Now, let's not kid ourselves. We all know it has something to do with this sphere. And I think for everyone's safety, we'd better find out what. You find out in a hurry. You ready, Anne? Mm. Well, they start at 5,000, and then work up to 20. 7 over 4 at 5,000. 362 at 10,000. 10 minus at 0.07. 864 at 20. How are you getting on? Just finished. And? Well, as far as I can tell, it's an energy valve of complex and fantastic ingenuity. It's so complex, we can only theorize. It's quite beyond my knowledge. It works as a powerful oscillator on the bench circuits. It responds to stimuli throughout the electromagnetic spectrum. Throughout the spectrum? But how does it maintain equilibrium? Well, at the moment, I can only suggest that the selenium shell acts as a thermionic buffer and keeps the electrodes at their critical temperature. Go on. Well, the base control seems to be the source of a fluctuating magnetic field. That it could act as an automatic monitor and control the input ratio. Yes, that's why I suggest that it's an energy valve. Good. I had a call today from the BBC Radio Monitoring Service. They wanted to know if we were doing any experiments with high-frequency transmitters last night. They were trying to trace the source of some bad interference which cut the radio and television reception. I told them it was nothing to do with us. Well, what time was this interference? About nine, for about ten minutes or so. And it happened again later. Just about the time I left for home. And you felt ill soon afterwards, didn't you, Anne? Yes, that's right. This is an energy valve of incredible power. A power quite beyond our comprehension. As far beyond it as atomic energy would have been to a 15th century alchemist. Now, I think that power was switched on last night. To transmit messages back to where it came from? No, not a message and not to transmit. It was switched on to act as a receiver at 9 o'clock last night. Well, you see what it does, what its function is? It receives matter? Yes. Do you mean the transmutation of matter? Mm. Transmitted from some other planet, received by the sphere and converted into its original form. Meaning? We've had a visitor from space, Anne. Well, now will you admit that I did see something last night? No, no, wait, wait. We're still only theorizing, remember? Well, I go along with Jack. Nobody believed me last night. All right, we'll accept it for the moment. But where did this creature go when Anne sounded the alarm? Well, back into space, possibly. But what's more important is what did it come for? And will it return? Cooper! Uh, on the roof for three men and two machine guns. Uh, Bellows! Uh, guard the west side of the building. Uh, Front gate beginning position, sir! Right. Am I comfortable? Yes, I think so. Field telephone to the laboratory ready, sir. Radio circuit to the laboratory ready, sir. Check the amplifier circuit. Yes, sir. All right, I'm ready. I wish you'd let me do this, sir. 
No, I'm sorry to pull rank on you, Jack, but I wouldn't miss this for the world. Well, good luck, then. Hmm? Good luck. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I still think this is a fantastic lot of nonsense, but I'd be a lot happier if you'd let a couple of my men come with you. No, thank you. All right, let's go, then. Right. Here, Jonesy. What? Come here. If you stare at something long enough, do you get to imagining things? No, nah, not really. I was just looking at this thing here, and guess what? What? I distinctly saw a little trap door open in the top. Get away. Then what happened? A tiny little monster from Mars stuck his head out and stared at me with his goggle eyes. Go on. What happened then? He says, take me to your leader. Look out, there he is. <laughs> and what are you giggling like an hysterical schoolgirl for, Jones? We're oh, just having a bit of a laugh, Sarge. We was wondering what we'd do if a Martian popped out of that thing, Sarge. You'd place him under close arrest, and you'd march him smartly to the guard room. That's what you'd do, Higgins. Yes, we would, Sarge. That's what we said we'd have to do. Right, ho! That's him. Right. Outside you two! Have a level! Car move! Excuse me, sir. What? Oh. Yeah. Well, you try it, then. Uh, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, testing. Coming through loud and clear, sir. Good. Right. You'll be all right? Yes. And don't forget, under no circumstances are you to interfere. Good luck, Doctor. Uh, thank you. Switching off the main lighting now. That will enable me to see any visible change in the sphere at the earliest possible moment. Okay, you can start it. Sphere is starting to activate. It's jammed, sir. Switch over to the direct line. It's growing in brightness. The light is brilliant. There seems to be something that is affecting the human body. I Yeah. must be emitting a radiation that is injurious to the human being. I suggest, I urge, that everybody keeps clear till we know more about its effect. Major, leave him alone. 
We never expected this would be pleasant. He can walk out any time he wants to, so you must leave him alone. Even with my back to it, the life is beyond human endurance. To cover my eyes, pain in my head is intense. It's beyond your jurisdiction now, Doctor. Stand aside. Major, Dr. Morley has to be left alone. We must respect his wishes. My glasses. Glasses. Poor devil. Sphere! It's gone. You two, Sinclair, Robinson, get over to the west wing. Sergeant! What happened here, Sergeant? Two of the men thought they saw someone jump from the storeroom window, Sam. They challenged him, but he ran off. A couple of minutes later, I spotted him. I opened fire. Yes? Well, I could have sworn I ate him. But he just disappeared. One minute he was there, next minute nothing. Didn't you see him clearly? No, sir. All I saw was a Please, sort of a black shape. Major, sir, this way, please. Cover the gate, sir. Sir. What? Come in. Ah, Dr. Costain. Good of you to come along. I'm Superintendent Hartley. Sit down, won't you? Doctor, do you mind if I start off by asking you a question? By all means. How well did you know your former colleague, the late Dr. Morley? Not very well. I learned in a very short time to respect him and to trust him a great deal. Had he survived, I'm sure he could have told us something about the creature. Uh, what he looked like. What his purpose was here on Earth. Mm. You've seen this, have you? Yes, of course. I'm afraid I've stirred things up a little bit by giving my story to the press, but uh, 
It seemed to me the only way to get all that's happened into the limelight. Ah, yes, when a story like yours breaks, mind you, here at the yard, we'll we view the whole thing with incredulity. Still, we can't afford to ignore anything, no matter how far-fetched. Particularly these days, so much going on in the world, isn't there? In the universe, yes, it's been going on all the time. Right now, we're finding out about it. Look, I've got a list here of the names of all the girls who've disappeared. And, you know, with one or two exceptions, not one of these girls has any known living relative. Now, this fact seems to fall into line with your theory, doesn't it? Oh, by the way, just for the record, what do we call him? Man, creature, thing? Anything. Smith. Jones. Smith. Good. Now, how did you arrive at a connection between Smith and these missing girls? In simple language, if you please, Doctor. I thought the press were fairly explicit. Smith has been seen. Vaguely described, I'll admit, but seen standing outside the homes of some of the missing girls. Uh -huh. So Smith um, either murdered these girls or spirited them away. Taken them back into space. For what purpose? I don't know. Yes, well, it's a pretty long shot, isn't it, Doctor? Yes, it is. Can I ask you a somewhat pertinent question? Yes, go right ahead. Are you seeking publicity? If that were asked by anybody but a police officer, I'd clobber him. I'm sorry. Look, Superintendent, please get this straight. I gave my story to the press purely in the hope of getting police cooperation. We are not scientists, Doctor. I know, but somewhere along the line, there must be a bridge between science and criminal detection. If you accept my premise that Smith murdered these girls, or abducted them, or whatever, then we must work together. Yes, well, I've been given permission to work with you. Where do you want to start? I'm glad. I received a letter this morning from a woman named... Madge Lilburn. She's got a daughter that's been missing for three days. I think we ought to interview her. It goes like this. I haven't been to the police because they've never believed my story. And then yesterday I read your article in the newspaper. Jean went out about 7 o'clock that night. Said so she'd be back about 11. 11. Anyway, well, we went to bed early, didn't yes. we? Yes. She's got her own front door well, key. She's got door. her own key. Anyway, when Madge went in to call her in the morning, when she I went in to call, you see, the... She found a bed I had been slept in. There's one thing you ought to know, though, sir. I know what you must be thinking, but really, Jean isn't the sort of girl to go off without no. a word like that, Never is has she? Never been, no. No, she's a good... She's a considerate girl. Always been proud of her, you know. Mm, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure. Did you know where she was going? Well, mm. it was a secret, you see. See, she was going after this very good job. W wouldn't tell us about no, it. No, she didn't tell us what it was. But she was very excited about it all, wouldn't she? She was. Mm. Any idea what sort of a job it was? No. No. I'm sure it's all something to do with that horrible man. What man? Well, one night last week, there was a ring at the door. It was Thursday. Thursday? Yeah, it was my lodge night, wasn't it? Oh, it was Thursday, that's right. Mm. Well, there was this ring at the door. She, Madge was all alone, you I see. I was all alone. Well, I, I begged her to let me get her a dog, you know, Alsatian or something. But she won't Don't have it. You know, she says it mucks up the furniture. Go on, dear. Tell him about the man. They haven't got all chance, night. I have would, they? wouldn't I? Got other calls to make. Well, anyway, it was Thursday. There was this ring at the doorbell. Well, I was alone in the house, as Reg said. I was quite surprised, really. I was a bit scared because, well, we don't get visitors very often at night, you know, not during the week. Well, except Frida, she sometimes pops in, but I knew it couldn't be her. She'd gone down to Crawley. She told me she was going. Well, anyway, it was Thursday, and I was all alone, as Reg says. There was this ring at the door. Is it? What, what do you want? Mrs. Lilburn? Yes? Is your daughter in? Oh, no, I'm afraid she isn't. Do uh, you want to see her? I have a parcel to leave her. Oh, is that all? Well, I'll take it. Come on, then. I don't want to stand here all night. It's cold. Give me the parcel. 
Good night, Mrs. Lilburn. Good night. Oh, he gave me the creeps, though. I can tell you that. Standing there in the shadow. He did have a nice voice, though. I must say that. Mm. Yes, he did have a nice voice. Mm. It was sort of educated, you know. I always say you can tell a well-educated voice. And you think this man may have had something to do with your daughter's disappearance? I'm certain of it. Right, you shouldn't say what well, makes you say that, Mrs. Lilburn? Well, there was this packet he left for her. Oh, uh, what was in it? A photograph. Oh, it was a photograph of Jean. It was a very good one. You know. Well, it wasn't very flattering. Well, it was sort of uh, artistic, you know. It was in colour, you see. Mm. And, well, I'd, I'd never seen one like it before. It was mm. one of these new ones. What do you mean, new? Well, uh, it was... Uh, Funny, wasn't it? Well, I'd mm. never seen one like it before. It was made of a sort of plastic, you know, and it, and it was well in 3D, you 3D. know. May we see the photograph, Mrs. Lilburn? I'm afraid not. No, she took it with her when she went to the interview. I remember her saying, I mustn't forget to take the photograph, she yeah. said. Mr. Medra wants me to take the photograph. Medra? Oh, fancy me forgetting that. That's his oh, name. Oh, honestly, you're the So she Most went to see a Mr. Medra. Yes. So how did you come to meet him in the first place? Oh, I don't know. Well, you know what I think, Reg? I, I think she got it out on that magazine. Bikini Girl? Yeah, yeah. Bikini Girl. She's always, always reading this magazine, Bikini Girl. She's dying to be a model. You got a copy of it here? Um, well, there should be one somewhere, I think. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Lilburn, you mentioned something about his breathing. Oh, yes. It was heavy, you know, very heavy, like he got asthma or something. You know, like when he had that bad turn of bronchitis. Do you remember? Oh, don't we mind. wasn't it? Medra. That's right. Send the name down to records, see if they can dig anything up. Yes, sir. How many girls is it, Grant? Twenty-one with a Lilburn girlfriend. Twenty-one girls disappeared in under three weeks. Without a trace and for no reason. Oh, I thought I'd seen it all. I've never come across anything like this. I wonder if there'll be any more pictures up there tomorrow. Well, they're not doing us much good, are they, sir? <laughs> well, I mean, that's very funny, Grant. Miss Malone. Mr. Medra. Mr. Medra. Come closer, Miss Malone. There is nothing to be afraid of. Are you afraid of me? No, I'm not really. Sit down, please. You must remember that no harm will come to you. No harm will come to you. No harm will come to you.
any luck? Uh, records have nothing on Madras here. What about Interpol? No, nothing like that, sir. I've checked all the photographers as well. No one called Madra. I might have found something. Look at that ad. Independent television film producer requires talent. Young ladies with looks, personality and ambition needed. Please write with recent photograph to box 968. Well, there's not much to go on, I know, but it's worth checking. Go around the missing girls' homes. Tonight, sir? Yes, tonight. Yes, sir. All of them, sir? All of them. What am I looking for, sir? You're looking for copies of this, Tom. Copies of Bikini Girl. Well, you'd better see about doubling the force there, Commander. Yes, sir. Right, what's next? Well, we should be discussing Hartley's case now, sir. Ah, yes, indeed. And by the way, Savage, I, I see you've made no progress on that research establishment business. I'm afraid not, sir. Well, it's over a month now, no? I'm sorry I'm late, sir. Two more reported missing. That makes 23, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Well, we have got a couple of leads at last. I found a common denominator between them. They all read a magazine called Bikini Girl, and they all applied for a job advertised in this month's edition. And you think that that job was used as a bait? Oh, yes, there's a regular pattern to it. They apply for the job, they go up for an interview, where they have their photograph taken. And the photograph is then delivered to the girls' homes on the night before they disappear. Well, I've got a couple of descriptions of the man who delivered them. It's the same man each time. He sounds a bit of a freak, sir. A freak? Yes, he always comes after dark and he always stays in the shadows. He seems to be very tall. And he wears some sort of a scarf across the lower half of his face. And from the sound of his breathing, he could be an asthmatic. Well, it shouldn't be too difficult to find. Well, I've saved the most important lead until last, sir. Grant was checking the girls' homes about this Bikini Girl magazine, and he came up with the only piece of luck we've had so far. What's that? Well, one of the girls has a younger brother. He collects car numbers. He was coming home from Scouts one night, and he took down the number of a car parked outside the house. Well, that simplifies matters. Well, not quite, sir. You see, Grant checked records half an hour ago. The car's been reported stolen. Oh, no. Yes, a month ago. From the government research establishment at Faisley Park. Yeah, all right, Fred. Uh, how'd you get on, sir? Oh, splendidly. The old man's put the head of special branch in charge of the case. Commander Savage, why on earth should he do that? Still hush-hush, I'm afraid. Tom, let's leave it at that, hmm? Did you get through to the editor of Bikini Girl? Yes, sir. The advertisement was paid and posted in with a post office money order. Uh, they've seen the people concerned. The address given was a false one. I checked. Well, was there a name on the application? Medra. I also found out how many applications had arrived at the box number. Well, how many? 201. Good grief. Yes, the editor said that sort of ad always gets a lot of replies. Yeah, but they must have forwarded the applications on to somewhere. Too true, sir. To an address in Soho. So sorry, Inspector. Did I frighten you? Superintendent, no, you didn't. Oh, congratulations. It's some years since we last met, isn't it? Yes, it is. Six months of living off the proceeds, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It's been in the same game, is he? Different version, same game. Anything I can do for you, Inspector? Mm -hmm. Superintendent. Medra. That's what you can do for me. Medra. No. You had over 200 oh, answers to an advertisement in Bikini Girl over the last 18 days. So don't tell me you don't know. You use my business as an accommodation address. Anything wrong in that, uh, Superintendent? You'll find out what's wrong if you don't cooperate. Now, come on. Give me a description. That'll be hard. <laughs> yeah, you always did seem a creepy sort of bloke, though. But if you don't do business with peculiar people, you don't do business in this part of the world. Now, what did he look like? You must have got a good look at him in here. Mm. He always had a scarf all over his face. You couldn't see very much of it, but uh, he was tall. Yes, he was very tall. He was about six foot five, I should think. Very odd, too. He always had a strange way of keeping in the shadows. Yes, like you. Now, come out from behind there where I can see you. Who? How do you mean odd? Well, sort of unnatural. 
Uh, some people aren't normal, are they? No, they're not. I suppose I've seen this murderer about a dozen times. Each time I've seen him, it seems sort of weird. Though I know. Sounds crazy. I think he wore a mask. A mask? Mm -hmm. But under the scarf? Mm -hmm. A mask. You could see his eyes through the slits. Oh, they were horrible. Green, like a snake's. I like men with nice eyes, don't you? I tell you something. He even gave me the creeps. Then why did you agree to handle letters for him? Because he paid me well. Fifty quid down and a pound for each letter. Mm, not bad. Mm, I did all right, didn't I? I didn't know he was crooked, though. Who said he was? Well, I thought, uh, What's he done, anyway? You've read in the papers about the girls who've gone missing? Yeah. Well, I had nothing to do with that. No? Oh, <laughs> well, letters, girls, photographs. Some men pay a lot for the little in my life. How did he get the letters? Called for them every couple of evenings. You expect him this evening? Mm -hmm. Any particular time? Mm, about 6.30. Where can I hide a few men? The front door is the only way in. All right. I'll have him here later. You got some letters for him? No, I'm afraid things have been slackening off just lately. Well, you tell him that. Don't detain him and don't try and alarm him. You're fine. You can count on me. You'll regret it if I find I can't. Magic seeing you again. You wanted to see me, sir? Ah, uh, yes, Hartley. Uh, this is Dr. Costain and Miss Anne Barlow. They're from the Research Institute of Paisley Park. Well, Dr. Costain and I have met. How do you do? Good. Well, now sit down. Let's get started. Have you anything to report? I think we'll get him tonight, sir. He's expected to pick up some more replies to the advertisement at 6.30. I'll have the whole area surrounded, and when he turns up, we'll be waiting for him. If he goes to that shop, we'll catch him. There's no man alive can get through the net I'm spreading for him. Unfortunately, gentlemen, Medra is no man alive. In many respects, he's superhuman. Not born of this planet. You're not just up against a criminal mind. We're fighting uh, an alien civilization. One at least a hundred, or maybe a thousand years in advance of ours. Let's show the man. This is a map of the planetary system. Here's the sun with its nine major planets. Earth is the third planet. This is the fifth planet, Jupiter, the giant planet with its 12 moons. And this, gentlemen, is where Medra comes from. Jupiter three, the third moon, known to astronomers as Ganymede. Now, wait a minute. Just let's assume that Medra did come from out of space. How can you possibly know as it was from Jupiter 3? As you know, we've been examining a sphere at Baisley Park. We've been able to collate enough evidence to prove that it was an energy valve of incredible proportions. A valve which is the slave of a master system, the whole of which is used to transmit and receive matter. But why Ganymede? We've been tracking intense radioactivity on our radio telescopes for a month now. We have cross-references enough. The master transmitter is on Ganymede and we can produce 50 other scientists and astronomers to prove that as well. Well, why has he come to Earth? Why is he involved with these missing girls? That's what we're trying to find out. One possible explanation might be that they're being abducted for experimental purposes. Genetic experiments, do you mean? Yes. The investigation of man under laboratory conditions. Extermination would be a simple matter for a science like theirs. Don't forget one thing. Medra is laboring under great difficulties, too. He's in a foreign environment like a diver under the sea. We think he has to wear a, a special kind of breathing apparatus built into a mask to cope with our atmosphere. Yes, I see. Gentlemen, I have a suggestion to make. Well, it's not a suggestion, it's a fait accompli. I have applied to Medra for an interview. You've what? I'm meeting him tonight, and the place where you hope to trap him, at Thorben's bookshop. You'll do no such thing, Anne. Look, Jack, you, you need information, don't you? You need his knowledge. Without that, all your work will be wasted, and the kind of threat we believe he is will grow. You need someone to find out what he's about before the police get him, because I don't think he'll be taken alive. I can't agree with that, Miss Barlow. But the idea does make sense, Doctor. It's easy enough for you to say, but it's not your life she's risking. Anne, I can't agree to it. I'm not under your jurisdiction in this matter, Jack, so no one's going to stop me. Just 
give me a few minutes with him, that's all. We gave Dr. Morley a few minutes. I know. But Medra must have known that Dr. Morley constituted a direct threat to him. But so would you. I don't think so. Just a few minutes, Jack. Please. Now, after all, I don't see if she can come to any harm. The place will be well guarded. We'll be less than a stone's throw away from her. All right. Have it your way. All right, boys, take up your positions. The moment Medra moves into the alley, both ends will be sealed off. Are you sure there's no other way out of that shop? Oh, there's a window, but it's heavily barred. Only if he's coming, he shouldn't be long now. What about Miss Barlow? She'll be here any minute. She's ahead of time. Typical of Thorburn to leave the door unlocked. Lazy brute. Miss Barlow. Miss Barlow. Why did you ask for this interview? I was interested in your advertisement. You are a professional model. Yes. I'm afraid I don't believe you. Look in my eyes. I said I'd give her three minutes. Yes, with Medra. In the shop, with or without Medra. Three minutes and there's only two left. I'm no sign of him. I wish I could be sure of that. You are frightened of me, aren't you? Yes, I'm frightened. That's how I know you're lying. Only those who wish me harm become frightened. Now tell me the truth. I came to see you to ask your purpose in visiting the Earth. And to learn the secrets of my planet, Ganymede. What else did you come here for? To find out what has become of the girls you abducted. We scientists have tried not to accept the idea that you wish to destroy. We believe that you are of a civilization and intelligence a thousand years in advance of ours. Yet you do destroy. 
Haven't you learned the futility of violence? We have suffered from violence just as you have. We try to be gentle. I want to know... Yes? What happened on your planet? We interfered with the laws of the universe, just as you are attempting to do now. We found it impossible to suppress the emotions of love and hate. So we slipped back into the dark abyss. The problem of life is that there is always an enemy who will kill or be killed. There is always someone to fear. You have no need to fear me. On the contrary, I fear what I cannot control. And I cannot control an intelligence that is almost equal to mine. A mind such as yours searches and destroys. <laughs> Okay, let's go. He was here all the time. We aren't catch your men to search every square inch of this area. Want a ring around the whole of Soho. I'm sorry. It's evident that we're dealing with a creature not only of superhuman intelligence and power, but one also possessing a primordial lust for violence and savagery. Also, gentlemen, it's my opinion that Medra could be the forerunner of a full-scale invasion. You mean there's no limit to the number that can be transferred here by this device? No, none at all. That's why it's imperative that we track down that sphere and destroy it before it's too late. How do we locate it? Well, when it's in use, it emits secondary radiation. What about radio detector bands? No, they're not in the same radio spectrum. a minute, it's the same spectrum, a different method. If we use something more powerful than a radio detector van, we could pick out the spots that were made negative and find it by a process of elimination. But we'd need the cooperation of every radio astronomy establishment in this whole country. Well, I can promise you all the help you can use. Well, then I'd better get back to Faisley Park right away. Go with him. Lay on everything he wants. Right, sir. Can I have your permission, sir, to put out a warning on radio and television? <coughs> I want the girls who replied to that advertisement to get in touch with us. We know that over 200 girls replied to that ad, sir. I am aware of that, Hartley. But there's something here even more important. I know that, sir. All right, put out the warning. But nothing else. I want to hold what happened last night from the press till the last possible moment. Before the news, we have an urgent police announcement. Will any girl who applied for a position in answer to an advertisement that appeared in this month's edition of Bikini Girl magazine under the box number 968. Please contact the nearest police station immediately. The police wish to state that by answering the advertisement, these girls have placed themselves in great danger. Yes, well, let's hope that saves at least one girl from... A fight worse than that, sir. We should cut out the jokes, Grant. It makes me nervous. I'll take your foot off the chair. The equipment should be ready soon. Good. Well, Lieutenant, make sure that the master references are marked out exactly. You think it'll work? It all depends on whether we can find and set the wavelengths of the sphere. If we can, and we need to do it fast, we can plot the position from our monitors. A Jodrell Bank radio telescope, the American radar early warning system at Filingdale in Yorkshire, there in Cornwall, here in London. 
If and where the lines converge will be the side of the sphere. After that, sir, it'll be up to you. Every army combat unit in the south of England is standing too. I only hope it's enough. I will thank you very much indeed for getting in touch with us. Right, we'll be there in ten minutes. Sir, that girl just speaking to us met Medra. What? Met him last night. Would you get the address? Well, thank you. I'll send a police officer around to get the details. Have the place raided. That's not all, sir. She just had a photograph delivered. You can guess the description she gave. I'm going to see her. If they stick to the pattern, she should go missing later on tonight. I want 20 men for a raid, and I want them armed. Anything happen yet? Why don't you relax? Relax? I guess you're right. There's nothing I can do until Hartley gets through. Tell me, this, um, this what do you call it, um, trans, transmutation of matter, you think we'll ever be able to do it? Possible. You might say we have our feet on the bottom rung of that ladder. We have? Yeah, we can transmit in two dimensions, on the telly. All we need is the third, substance. And then we'll be able to pay them a visit, eh? Would you like to be the first volunteer? No bloody fear. Good. Then you can relax. Because before we did that, we'd have to land a transmitter on Ganymede, which we're not able to do. I think we could stick to present problems for the moment. So it's me. And you say it was a strange interview? I must say I was a bit scared at first. It was this beautiful suite of offices, you see, with no one in them. And then the door opening without any warning. Of course, I realized it was worked by some kind of remote control, but um, they make you jump when they open all the same. Mm. And this Mr. Medra, did he threaten you? Well, well, you'll think this is funny, I know, but I can't remember him. I remember standing in this room asking if he was there, and I remember his voice speaking. It was a wonderful voice. Kind and soothing. Do you know what I mean? And you don't remember this being taken, huh? No, the first I knew about it was when this man rang my bell and handed it to me. I told you about that. Well, it seems a perfectly ordinary photograph to me. Well, not to me, it isn't. It's so lifelike. And the background seems to... to alter. Alter? Well, how do you mean, alter? Well, sometimes, when I... Oh, forget it. It's just my imagination. And you don't remember anything at all about the interview? Huh? Nothing. The only thing I remember after Mr. Major speaking was being in the street outside his office. Yeah, well, perhaps it'll come back to you later. I'm having a flat watched, Mr. Malone, so if you see some men hanging about, don't be afraid. I can't believe I could be in any danger from Mr. Major there. It's just why you are in danger. Because you don't believe it. Luck at Medra's office, sir. It's uh, deserted. Uh, did you leave somebody outside? Yes, sir. How'd you get on with the Malone girl? Mm, she didn't tell us a thing we don't already know. I've got a feeling, though. I think Medra will make a move for her tonight. We're staying put.
I know that, sir, but I would like to keep this girl under surveillance. Just follow Medra if he shows, Hartley. We must find this sphere, locate and destroy it. Keep in constant touch. Very good, sir. just picked up another girl. Don't lose them, Hartley. Lieutenant, keep this line open and mark the route. Message coming through from Jodrell Bank, sir. What is it? They've started to pick up a signal from the sphere, sir. No direction obtainable at present strength. Farlingdale's picked up the signal, sir. Well, it's all up to Hartley now. I hope he can keep out of sight. Well, I don't think it matters. Major knows he's being followed, and I don't think he can. Hartley? We're heading through Guildford. Looks as though they're making for the hog's back. Hartley, as soon as you have your men positioned, trap him, and if need be, shoot to kill. Wait a minute, Commander. Hold it. I don't think I've made myself clear. We're trying primarily to destroy the sphere, not Medra. I must have an opportunity to communicate with him. After that, I don't care what you do. Don't you see, if we can separate him from the sphere or destroy it, we'll eliminate his only means of mobility. He'll be as helpless as a genie without a lamp. Aren't you being a bit rash? Please, Commander, do what I say. I'll do my best, but you'll have to leave it to our discretion. Message from John Hartley. Banks, sir. Now, listen carefully. They have a bearing, green 7451. All right, keep at it. I've got a signal now. Filingdale has a reading, sir. Blue 857. Well, that's about 10 miles from here. Position now reported, sir. Village of Rusley. All right, let's go. Stay here. So every exit is guarded. In a few minutes, I shall be returning to my planet. Nothing you do can stop me. My task here on Earth is completed. Tell us about your planet, Medra. A thousand years ago, we made our first stumbling steps into space. We visited the Earth to find we could not survive its atmosphere. But we from Ganymede knew that we were superior beings and had nothing to learn from you. We had knowledge that could lead to eternal peace and progress, but also embodying the darker powers of universal destruction. So our civilization ended just as yours would end. But there were survivors. A few. And they were terrible to look upon. It took centuries of procreation before signs of normality began to appear. A hand like this, instead of this. My face? You would like to see it, perhaps? It is quite typical.
that why you came to Earth? To find new blood? You have no need to fear for the young women who are returning with me. They will come to no harm. You see, we have learned our lesson. One day I may return, if it isn't too late. Let's hope they find the cure and tell us. <laughs> <laughs>